Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we're going to be painting up some of the mobs from Massive Darkness 2, which just arrived. The reason I wanted to go with the mobs is everyone's going to be playing loads and loads of mobs, and these skeletons just massively caught my eye. I thought they were very, very different to most skeletons. They are scrawny little skeletons, but they're bulked up by what they are wearing, and I just thought it was a different take on these miniatures. Now, in this particular video, I am going to be painting up the entire horde. There's a few reasons for that. You can save some time by mass painting them all because you've got the paints out in one go and then you're able to apply it across many miniatures. It saves you shaking the bottle up as many times, getting the paint out, wasting paint, things like that. It's just going to increase the speed. But the other thing is if I don't paint them all in one go, I'm going to be honest, I'm just going to paint one and then the rest are never going to come out the box. So I thought if I do them all in one go, that is this entire mob done. In this video, I'm going to be concentrating using speed paints by the Army Painter. In fact, I'm going to try and avoid using anything other than silver paints just to paint on some of the metallics. I'm going to go for speed paints all the way, see how fast I can crack out these six. And because I'm using Army Painter speed paints, I have primed these already using Army Painter's matte white as they recommend. I, if you've been watching the channel, I often use the contrast primers because they're slightly smoother, but for some something this small and fiddly and grimy anyway I do not think it's gonna matter so I get to use up my white primer as well as saving a little a bit of money so I will be sticking to the artwork for the foremost copying along with this but as I said I'm gonna make them all slightly unique and I'm gonna mix around the colors I'm gonna use the exact same color palette that's gonna save me a huge amount of time but where he's got a black cloak here he can have a brown cloak in another one and a black belt in that one and so on and so forth. So we've got a light brown, a medium brown, a dark brown and a black all involved. And I'll move these colors around the skeleton's attire as we go through. But the one I paint on camera that you can easily see all the way through, I'll stick to the artwork. And if you want to make them all exactly the same as this, I think that's a nice effect that's actually quite often what I go for when I'm painting up a horde so they're easily recognizable and they look like they're wearing a uniform it looks fantastic but a lot of other people like to make each one unique and I might even put little name tags on the base I'm not, I'm not going to do that but you could you could treat yourselves so one area you will lose a load of time to painting and why batch painting can save it you're shaking paints especially these speed paints they need a good mix but one little pro tip, pro tip grab a bunch in your hand that you're going to be using on the miniature shake them all in one go and just save yourself a bit of effort so for the skeleton skin, and I say skin, but I don't mean skin for his body parts, his actual bone, his skeleton, I'm going to use, it's going to be simple, I'm going to use flaccid boner, army paint, a speed paint, uh, it's the pale bone colour, and we're going to apply it to his face, then all of the bones that we can see, which are both of his shins, one of them is really difficult to make out, he's like missing a big chunk, but his hands are visible as well, and also a little bit of his arm holding the sword maybe his elbow it's a little bit difficult to make out what's what but we'll go around do this it's going to be straightforward I'm going to apply this to the other five in the background as well really saving some time because shaking that thing took forever and painting these bits is going to be really quick i'm going to be using my small brush this is my red grass games size double zero i actually think it's a really nice contrast slash speed paint brush, although they are a little bit expensive, mine are erect, but they hold the paint really well and apply it really easily to the miniature. Guys, if you want links to any of this stuff, it will all be in the description below and it does support the channel ever so slightly if you check out with us. Well, it took one colour and five minutes to paint up the other ones, so remember how much I dislike batch painting. Let me know in the comments below if you actually enjoy batch painting. My, I myself get a lot of pleasure out of finishing a miniature, so having to wait to see them all done is what's soul destroying for myself. But if you are like myself, grab yourself a nice glass of whiskey, maybe put on some banging tunes or spend the entire time wishing you had more limbs so you could paint them all at once. So for the next speed paint, we're going to use sand gonads and we're going to be applying this all over his sort of, oh, I guess it's studded leather armor i mean it just looks cloth it looks like anything a small toothpick would actually go through that and penetrate his oh, i want to say skin again but it's not skin his bones anyway i digress it's not really important how sturdy his armor is he's the undead as you can see in the background though i've already applied this color as i said i'm going to paint them all up pretty much unique trying to stick to the same palette so i've applied a little bit of this color all over those other skeletons in different places just mixing it up keeping it real etc etc so if you do want to keep them all uniform and you and, and not unique what's the opposite of not unique duplicated you heard me but if you want to do that copy the one that i'm painting right here because that's roughly and i say roughly it's not an exact match to this color but going to match the artwork in the game for our third color we are going to use hard on leather and we're going to be applying this 
in front of the camera, in front of your eyes, to where I think it should go on the actual miniature depicted in the artwork, which are these belts across his waist, as well as, what do you call that, a sheath for his sword, just dodging the bottom so we can paint that up in metallics later, although it doesn't really matter if you get the speed paint on, on that part because the metallics will cover it super easy peasy. And in the background, once again, you can see random places, they're not random, other places on the miniature where I've applied this hard-on leather, where I think it looks generous. One of the cloaks has been done, the back of the shield on another, uh, some various, is plume on another, various different places. So again, just using that same palette, saving us some time with this batch paint job, but also mixing up and making them unique. With that brown finished up on all of these skeletons, it's time to move on to another color. Guess what color we're gonna move on to? Yeah, that's right, another brown. These guys look like they've just got back from an explosion at the local sewer factory. It's proper grimy, but I guess it's fantasy, right? And it's all sort of set in the past, and I guess just not many colors were invented back then. But we're gonna be taking Gotwood by the Army Painter, another speed paint, a dark, dark brown this time, and applying this again in front of your eyes to the miniature trying to copy along with the artwork with this color i will be painting up the back of his shield and then i can't see this guy's shoes but i'm gonna just to just to condense the palette i'm gonna use the same brown on the bits of the shoes that aren't those sort of wraps that are covering him and then again yeah the miniatures in the background they've already had some of this paint applied in various different places just making them all unique and with that done we can finally leave brown town but we're not going to stray too far we're going to keep in the drab territory and move onto Glory Hall Grey. We're going to be painting up the one in front of us cloaked to try and match the artwork. I'm going to use a big brush for this just because it's a big area and I want to apply this plate, apply this paint quickly and efficiently. And then I'll go down to a small brush just to paint the front bits between his legs and down the sides and stuff like that. In the background, you can already see I've applied a bit of grey to a bunch of them in various different places, just keeping it fresh and mixing it up. I'm trying to work out what colour his plume is in the art, but who knows. But I'm going to go with Fire Giant orange yeah that's right you heard me and that's just a quick little dab on the top of his head it does give me another color to paint some of the other skeletons behind i'm not sure an orange pelt goes but i went for it anyway so i've noticed there's a little bit of extra bone on this miniature which i messed up i could just couldn't see it very easily but super easy to fix because we primed this in army painters matte white we can just use their matte white white paint and just touch up the areas i want to use some speed paints on again so he's got these bones across the top of his Help, like sort of hot, I don't know, some sort of fashion accessory, some sort of amulet. And he's also got a couple of bones poking out of his helmet as well. So I'm just going to apply this white, just bring it back to that, that prime color, and then we'll be able to apply some more speed paint over it. If you are painting more carefully, neater than I was, you, you won't need to do that touch up bit, but it is incredibly difficult to miss those bits and do a good coverage on his pelt anyway. So it might just be better just cover it, Get that paint right up to it everywhere you need and then just touch it up using that matte white. It didn't take too long and only six six miniatures to fly through and touch those bits up. But once that's done, we can get back out that pallid bone and apply that to the horns on his helmet, this sort of neck neckerchief horn amulet thing. And then for this particular miniature, I'm going to paint those last two straps on his sheath of his sword in the same pallid bone too. Obviously, the ones in the background, I just picked random different browns and, and kept it mixing it up. So off camera, I've just added a very, very quick base, which there's a tutorial for on the channel. If you've not seen this before, it takes tens of seconds, very, very quick and efficient. I gave it a quick black rim as well, just to then drop it anyway. But yeah, I gave it a quick black rim just to tidy that up. And then finally gave it an anti-shine matte varnish spray outside um, just to protect what we've painted so far. The reason for that is because I'm going to move on to the metallics now and they are a more satiny, sparkly finish and I don't want to anti-shine that. So I'll just paint those on normally and I might add a, a brush on satin varnish on top of them afterwards. We'll see. A lot of it's going to be like sort of untouchable, but maybe the shield and sword needs a little bit of protection, that sort of thing. Anyway moving on to painting the metallics. So for the metallics, I'm going to take my massive brush and apply some Claymore Blade Shining Silver, if you've not got the zombie side set, and just very quickly slap a layer on the sword on both sides. And while I've got this big boy brush out, I'll also give a quick single coat to the shield on this side too. I was actually going to switch to painting this just using metallics, using it properly, but it seems I might have a bit of a problem, a bit of an addiction to speed paints, and I'm actually going to just base coat it in this Claymore blade, and then we're going to add some more speed paints on top. The added bonus, of course, to that is if you've not seen these speed paints used as metallics, you get to see that in this video, see how like really quite good they are. You get all the highlights 
and the, sh the shadows and shading and everything just for applying it on top of this silver. Uh, so I thought it was a nice place to show co show coast it, show co show showcase it 500 times lucky. So I thought that'd be nice to show you guys just in case you've not seen that. And also, yeah, I'm just really lazy and really, really like using speed paint as much as possible now. I have downsized my brush now to the double zero and that's just to paint in the smaller areas of metal on these miniatures as well as some details. So we'll catch around the rim of his shield uh, with, with the smaller brush because that's a finicky bit to paint. Need a little bit of precision. The What are these things? They're like grips for the strap of his shield but there's a couple of those holding this strap on so he's got a nice tight grip. And then there's a metallic wrist strap as well. I, I, I don't know much about shields. I don't mu know much about much to be honest but these bits look metallic so I'm going to paint those in metallic as well. We've also got this sort of broken bit of his shield. I'd say all, all of this top bit is supposed to be metal so I'll be tidying that up neatly and making that all look like shiny silver. You've also got the details of his sword sheath here which I'll catch with this. I notice in the artwork there's actually like a dragon on one of his belts. I'm kind of not gonna lie, pretty glad they missed that bit of detailing out from the miniature. I think that would be insanely difficult to paint on something of this scale. But if any of you are freehand adding those dragons onto these belts, please do tag us in on Instagram. I would love to see that. He's also got a belt buckle just here, so I'll catch that with a little bit of silver. Now, with all the other miniatures, if you are batch painting these all together, then you could use different coloured metallics, different coloured, well, different coloured metallics and different coloured speed paints on top if you so wish and you can get a whole bunch of different looks and effects but I'm probably going to stick to the same ones just a gold and a silver and see how that looks and then finally just with this silver while it's out I'm going to paint on a dot on every one of the studs on his studded leather armour and pop all of those little rivets out. Once the silver's dried I'm going to take a little bit of sand golem again we've already used this colour and I'm just going to paint this ring around his shield a little bit of detailing and just pop that out so once that's dry it's going to look a bit like tarnished gold maybe even semi bright shiny gold but just just a different colour to the silver. I'm also going to do these tiny bits I don't know what this is called on his sword but this bit of detailing work just here which hasn't actually come out that well in the mould of uh, and this wibbly wobbly sword as well. Uh, there's videos on the channel by the way because I'm noticing at least half of these swords are particularly bent uh, but there is a video available if you guys don't know how to unbend that and it matters to you it might be worth checking that out. So we're on to the final colour, it's Gravelord Grey, once again making its encore, coming back from the past. And for this we're just going to paint over a lot of this silver, a lot of the remaining silver. I'm going to leave his studs well enough alone because I want them to be sort of bright and highlighted. Probably leave the sleeve for his shield, the sheath for his shield, that little bit on the bottom. But I'm going to catch these bits on his shield along with along the top. That's really just going to add some shading, some shadowing in there and blend it a little bit better into the, the wood on the other side. On the actual shield, I'm going to apply a really generous amount and let the speed paint do its, do its thing, pull itself away. Uh, it's really going to dull down the shield. I'm not going to go around the edge of the shield. I'm going to leave that as it was so that's going to be self highlighting to some degree and just making the edge of the shield look like it's catching the light. For the centre of the shield I'll do exactly the same although I'll try and sweep it all the way around like so. Let that hopefully pull where it meets the gold and I'll also just brush a little bit off with my finger as though it's you know been, been battle bad damage bash. You could probably brush a lot of it off if you would like to sort of make it look like it's been rubbed and you know taken some wear and tear that would be quite realistic. Again quite a generous helping on the helmet and I kind of let that just do its own thing. Don't mind that being dulled down a little bit. Again you could just rub it off maybe the center of his helmet and you'll get a nice shine there as though he's headbutted something maybe. Who knows what this skeleton's been up to. I'm going to slap a generous coating on this wrist guard which I forgot to tell you to paint in silver. Hopefully you noticed he'd got this big piece of metal on his wrist. I have no idea what this is but 
a quick slap of this Gravelord Grey over it on that silver is going to make it look sort of metallic-y and make it look a lot better, I think. A splash on the bottom of his sword, his handle, like so. And then same on the sort of, is this the hilt around here? I'll put a generous coat in and let it do its thing and around this side. And then for the actual blade, again, got plenty on the brush. I'm just going to sweep up from the bottom on each side, I'm sort of dodging the middle so it'll leave a pretty nice shine in the very central part, although that would probably pull away anyway, but something like that, once that's dry, it should look proper bow. And just like that, this mob is complete. Now, if you watch the channel for many, many, many years, you know I do not deviate from the artwork, and I very rarely make unique-looking sculpts. So this was a bit of a change, a bit different, not, not, not my normal. Let us know in the comments below what you do. Do you make each piece look unique and individual like this, or do you paint them uniform, unified, all identically? I do think that saves a little bit of time, not necessarily because if you keep the palette like this, not necessarily because you're changing colours that often, them because you're still using the same colors across the six but just just the brain power like thinking which piece to do in each color and like what colors make sense as like a pelt because some colors just would not make any sense anyway guys let us know what you do in the comments below and let us know what piece from this game you would most like to see painted next and if you don't let us know that as well just leave us a comment keep me keep me entertained and less lonely thank you all ever so much for watching and i'll see you again soon Again, in the background, I've already painted up various different appendices. That's not the word, is it? Again, it's making its little, um, what do you call it? Crappity crap. It's the final pull up. So we're on to the final color. Guess what time it is? Oh, fuck.